How's it going everyone? My name is Lionel and welcome to Glass Mine. Now there's been a lot of hype about this game and we're about to find out why. Hey, future me here. Just want to let you guys know that there are jump scares in this game, so just be on the lookout for that. Anyway, back to the video. What is my name? My name is Lionel. It's around sunset and you're moving boxes of valuables and various knickknacks into your temporary home. It's closer to the new medical program and renting an apartment would hurt more than student loans. You're grateful that your parents offered you to use their rental for the time being. The house was nothing special. All paintings and decorative items float on the walls from the last time it was used. So you did have the house to yourself, so you can't be upset. The heavy lifting of bed frames and tables were already set up inside, thanks to the movers. But even with the small amount of furniture, it feels empty. You carry the last box from the back of your car into the house. It's filled with posters and college merch, and you decide to decorate your room before the day ends. Oh, yeah, that's right. Tomorrow's the first day of clinicals. The college you were enrolled at previously had a medical assistant program that would be stupid to give up. It required moving a bit out of ways to a hospital out of nowhere, but that was no problem. A 20 minute drive is better than a three hour drive. You haven't seen the place in anything other than pictures, but the coordinator seemed like a nice guy. Going hands-on is definitely the learning curve you've been needing. Going virtual for our other courses also wasn't a challenge. You weren't social much anyway. Thinking about meeting others puts a frown on your face. Not whilst in school, but with the neighbors, you let out a long groan. I better go introduce myself now, if I don't f I'll forget to later. Walking out, the sun was about to dim. It was right before dinner time. Perfect. You look at the houses beside your own, similar in design, but more decorated and homely. The neighborhood you relocated to feels inviting. The trees are tall and the leaves are orange and red thanks to the autumn season. Houses lined up the street and came to a halt at the cul-de-sac. The sound of birds chirped as they settled in by sunset. You make your way over to your first visit. To the right of your home stood a small green house. On your way up, you noticed the grass was long and unkempt. The house cast a shadow from where it started to the edge of the street. The porch was barren and the sounds of a loud TV could be heard inside. You raise your hand and knock. No one seems to answer, but the lights are on inside. Rude. You decide to knock again. Still no answer. You groan to yourself quietly. Stepping off the neighbor's porch, you can hear the door lock loudly. What a bunch of assholes! Hopefully you'll have better luck at the next house. Next door stands a single-story residence with a plain yard out front. The house was a little run down and the grass was patchy. You make your way towards the stairs and up onto the porch. Before you raise your hand to knock, you see something shuffle in the curtains with a quick snap. They shut. You feel uneasy and a cold shiver runs down your spine. Hesitantly, you knock on the door. A few seconds pass and the door opens. Your neighbor stands before you, peeking out the door with nothing but a cold gaze. H Hi, uh, I'm Lionel, your new neighbor. I just wanted to pop over and introduce myself. Their eyes fixate onto you. Uh, I just moved here and... I just wanted to see how you may be, uh, doing. You may as well be talking to yourself. The silence was uncomfortable. Um, I, I guess I'll apologize. Sorry if it wasn't a good time. It's not. Excuse me! <laughs> it seems people here aren't the friendliest. Maybe it's your lack of positive peer-to-peer -peer interaction, or maybe people just don't enjoy strangers knocking on their doors. Shocker. Well, so much for this. So much for meeting the neighbors, I guess. Retreating home, the lack of personalized decoration upsets you. Thinking of tomorrow's clinicals brings you to your senses, and you decide to get some rest while there's still some time left. You head back into your room for the night and flop down onto your half-thrown-together bed. Drifting off from all the hard work, you close your eyes. Tomorrow will be better. The sunset light 
pierced through the window, and the warmth of the rays can be felt on your face. You don't even use a blanket. You start to drift off into peaceful rest. Uh, hi there! You seem friendly. How are you doing? I like you already. Let's go. Falling asleep proved difficult. The new place made you feel out of your element. The blinds were thin enough to still see outside as you lay on a small mattress in the bedroom corner. Your thoughts wandered back to the guy peering at you. Should I be worried about them? Nah, my parents had always said this was a nice area. There's nothing to be scared of. Your alarm goes off. The sun is not yet over the horizon, so you feel inclined to get up and start your everyday routine. You walk out of your room. The living room was dark and quiet. Should you turn on the light? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's dark. Why would I not turn on the light? You feel uneasy, but you don't know why. Walk into the kitchen and opening up the cupboard, you frown at the lack of food you packed for your move-in. With only instant oatmeal and some apples to your name, the sad breakfast reminds you of all the shopping that needs to be done. I could stop by the store today. You take out a piece of paper from a notebook and scribble various groceries down for later, shoving it into your pocket, hoping you'd remember to check. The meal was bland and a little depressing. You shake your head in disappointment, yet you continue eating. You finish your sad meal and sit there. Now I should probably get dressed. You take your bowl to the sink and rinse it off before you head off. Your first dirty bowl in your new house. How exciting. You make your way towards your bedroom. Walk into your room. You're already starting to get yourself undressed. As you take off your clothes, you kept on before your big nap. You feel the breeze in your skin from the sweat. Sleeping in a warm room with a full outfit on probably wasn't the smartest idea. While changing, you can't help but hear a faint scratching sound. Looking all around your room to find where it's coming from, you find nothing. You decide to look outside. You see the sky getting brighter as the sun climbs slowly. Birds once again chirping as they awake and start their day. Apart from that, there is nothing out of the ordinary, except for the eyes staring at me from the distance. I mean, can you see them? Can you see them, guys? They're right there. They're right there. Nothing at all. Make your way towards the college hospital. The building towers over you. The building was huge and could be seen from a mile away. The chance to be doing your clinicals in a hospital this big was a huge step in your medical career. It also stood by the college for more local medical students. Who knows, I might just enroll in this college instead. Walking up to the front doors, you look down at your watch. 8.45, just 15 minutes before you start your first day. The inside was so clean and sterile looking, your own footsteps echoed back at you in the lobby and the long hallways on either side. Inside, you meet the instructor for the day. A tall, broad man in gray scrubs patiently waits. Around him is a group of other medical students waiting for the day to start. The instructor looks at you. Ah, uh, hello. Uh, name? Uh, no, uh, it's Lionel. There's, there's so many people here. I swear, I thought I'd be early. Uh, no, you are. Everyone just decided to be earlier than you. He laughs at his own dry humor. The group was stagnant for the rest of the 15 minutes while other students trickled into the room. Looking around, everyone was close around your age, but some were older. The instructor steps back from the group of students. His demeanor towers over the entire group. This man was a behemoth. Is he also a possible love interest? I... I <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, I, I should not jump to conclusions just yet. What if I'm right? What if we're right? Morning, everyone. You are here today for your clinicals. I'm Dr. Fisher, and I will be your instructor for today. I know you're all anxious to start, but please be patient as this is a learning experience and a hospital is not something to rush into. Really, the other workers will think you're running towards the coat blue or something. For those that didn't study, that's a respiratory emergency here. All right, I'm going to tell you who you will be working with today. So when I call you up, please come up. The group of students mumble and talked amongst themselves as the instructor gave us our assignments. The group slowly diminished name after name. The hospital around you was a little frigid, and the sounds of a PA system echoed throughout the halls, with trauma callings for the emergency departments to be ready. Lionel! The instructor's voice echoes in the lobby. You look around to see that by the time you were done surveying your surroundings, everyone else had already left. 
Dr. Fisher is staring at you, waiting for your response. Yeah, sorry. You know, in healthcare, people die when you're not attentive. I'm kidding. Half kidding. Was that supposed to be a joke? Kind of sick, if you ask me. Today, you will be working with Nurse Evans up in 4 Alpha. 4 Alpha? That's a nickname for the department. Today, you'll be in inpatient mental health. The psych ward? Ugh, just your luck getting to work with the crazies. That felt insensitive. Most of them were people with suicidal tendencies who just want to feel better. Who was I to judge? God knows I've wanted to end it all just looking at what assignments you've done previously. That felt even more insensitive. Giving a nod to your instructor, you make your way down the hall and towards the elevators. Pressing the button, you wait for the elevator to make its way down to you. People passing by in the hall talks amongst each other, and you look out of place. Your scrub's brighter than others, and anyone could spot you from a mile away if they wanted. The elevator finally makes it to you. You walk in and press the button to the fourth floor. Alright. Literal elevator music. This is great. Can we just vibe in the elevator? God, this is taking a while. I mean, I know they're, they care for safety, but this is... This is atrociously long. Why is this going so slow? Hmm. I mean, I'm not, I'm not in any rush. I mean, hey, uh, people are dying. That's, that's all there is. Now that was insensitive. <laughs> oh, God. The door's finally open. You step out into the long hallway. To your right is the way to your station for today. And at the end, you are met with a set of uninviting double metal doors. They were dark gray with only two small windows in. Nothing could be seen from inside where you stand. Looking to over, you see the doorbell. Ring for assistance. You push the doorbell. A couple seconds pass and a voice calls back to you over the speaker. Hello? How can I help you? Uh... Oh, flirtatious greeting! Hell yeah! Hi, I'm Lionel. I'm here to work with you today. You sound lovely. That didn't sound creepy at all! Oh, well, thank you. I'll be right out. I'm Nurse Evans. You'll be working with me today. Please, come in. She ushers you in hastily. As you know, this is the psych ward, or what we call 4 Alpha around here. What we do is provide supervision and care to our patients while also making sure they are attended to in order to make their stay as pleasant as possible. Don't be surprised when you find a patient who is unreceptive to your hospitality. It's more common than you think. <sighs> today we don't have that many patients, just about six or so today. Should be a breeze for you. Of course, patients here come and go as their time of us ends. I should probably stop talking like that. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Alright, here we go. Usually it's three days, but sometimes we must keep them longer if we suspect they aren't fit for release. Come, let me introduce you to our patients, since it's time for the group. The table in the middle of the room had five people sitting around. Strange. I swore she said there were six people. Lionel, I'd like to introduce you to our patients. Why are they all hot? Here we have Wade. She points to a patient covered in bandages. They gave a wave at you, with a smile that was friendly and inviting. You all look very inviting. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy my job here. And next to them is Meme. She then points to a female patient with dyed white hair. They look too focused on a game of checkers by themselves. And over here is Lindsay, but you can call her Lynn. At the end of the table was another female patient. She looked at you and greeted you before going back to her game of what seemed to be goldfish, I think. There's Romeo, just across from her. Straight across from Lindsay was a patient with green frosted tips. They were smug, looks like they are winning the game. And lastly, we have Sue. Not a female patient greets you with a cheery smile. She was wearing an eye patch and had beautiful, dirty blonde hair. These patients will be with us for a short time. Again, usually patients stay with the allocated three days, so over time, they'll be fit for release. Hopefully, you have a good time here with us. We try our best to make it fun, not only for them, but for us. 
Why make a day boring for yourself when you can make it fun for everyone? Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. Each nurse and medical assistant will have one-on-one -on -one sessions with an assigned patient each day. Our patient prefers to go by cryptic. That's something we do here. We of course have a full legal name, but to promote a safe space for our patients, we accept any nicknames or preferred names. Our session is about to begin in a few minutes. Let me take you to the therapy room. Walking with her to the therapy room, you pass by the rooms in which patients sleep in. They're empty right now, and there are a couple beds in a big open room. The sheets were tucked in, neatly folded, where there resides no patients, and strung about sheets where patients have claimed a bed. The walls around you were mint green, and beneath them were a far wood paneling. The guardrails were about waist height, and you ran your hand across them as you walked. The ward was small, and the travel itself wasn't that far. She opened the door for you and led you inside. Alright, I'll be just for a second. I'm going to go grab a patient. She closes the door behind you. The room was small, with little furniture, a desk and two chairs. One for her and one for the patient. The lights were white and industrial, and the room was eerily quiet. You could hear shuffling around the panopticon? panopticon through the wall behind you. You lean against the wall and wait. Not long before the doors open, she returns with a female patient. She had long brown hair and dressed in the same cardinal maroon scrubs as all the other patients. The patient sits down in the blue school chair and looked up at you with a smile. Good morning, Cryptic. How are you today? She sat there, silently staring at me with her smile. She had drawn a crude clown nose on herself with what looked like an oil pastel. Final, this is cryptic. She's selective mute, as you can see, so we try to ask close-ended questions to give an evaluation. Kind of how you asked the open-ended question just a second ago? She laughed at your sarcastic remark. So cryptic, are you doing well today? She nods at the question before breaking gaze. That's wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. Did you get a good breakfast this morning? I heard they serve pancakes today. She again nods with a more enthusiastic smile. She loves pancakes. Every time we serve it, she eats them like they were nothing. Okay, Cryptic. My assistant here is going to ask you a few questions to get them acquainted with the job here. Is that okay? She nods. Wonderful. Here's her chart. Just go down the line and try to ask them open-endedly. Handing you the clipboard, you look at the list of questions. It's a long list. You'll only do three, so don't worry about doing all of them. Alright. Little interest or pleasure in doing things. Feeling down, hopeless or depressed, by having suicidal, homicidal thoughts. Um, I guess we'll go for the first one. Um, like, let's... Because I don't want to assume that she's that far down so we'll go with the lighter questions within the last two weeks have you had little interest or pleasure in doing things she ha she shakes her head no oh that's great she then moves her hand towards her chest and slaps him upwards barely hitting her that's american sign language she's saying she's happy oh that's that's so good i'm glad to hear that or see that i guess all right um, have you been feeling down, hopeless, or depressed? Within the past few weeks, have you been feeling down, hopeless, or depressed? She wants to get and shakes her head, no. Are you feeling suicidal or homicidal? Homicidal thoughts? Do you have any suicidal or homicidal thoughts? <laughs> oh, mother! I did not expect that. You are very close. I like that. She reaches at you with a stabbing motion at a fast pace. After, she immediately stops and giggles quietly. She looks back up at you with a giggly smile, with her hands folded neatly in her lap. Yeah, don't worry, she did that to me too when I first started talking to her. The session continued, and Nurse Evans asked all that she needed. The patient seemed fine apart from her little stunt. You leaned against the wall behind her, and the whole time, the patient looked at you with the same smile. Well, that seems to be everything. Thank you, Cryptic. I'll talk to you later on tonight before bedtime. She turned towards you. Come on, Lionel. We're done for now. Pretty straightforward, if I do say so. How was it? Well, I'm glad you're here with me. Well, I'm glad you're here with me, helping me out. She blushes at the remark. Oh, well, I'm happy to teach. It's kind of my thing. Maybe I can show you more things later if you feel up to it. Uh, sure. 
Um, that blush says a lot to me. <laughs> anyway, that's our one-on-one -on -one session. We're about to start a movie for the other patients in a few seconds. All right, come on. Um, let's sit in the lobby. You follow her around the front and into the lobby's office area. You sit down next to her. The station was busy with other staff members as the patients were sitting at the table. So that's pretty much it. Take care of the patients. Do your one-on-ones and take care of the patients some more. Scrub some charts, look over our physician orders. It's a snap. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, let's see. Are there any patients that you worry about? Is there anything fun about this job? Can I have your no- Can I have your number? Hell yeah! You give your best attempts to be flirtatious without being too obvious. Hmm, well, I was wondering if I could have your num- You know, I'm pretty sure this breaks, um, a lot of rules, like, in terms of, like, workplace policy. But considering I'm probably here as an intern, or, well, in this case, a medical assistant, I don't think it would be that bad, but it would probably look bad on my resume, uh, and my record. Oh, boy, I just screwed myself over. God damn it. You give off a small chuckle. She stares for a second. Oh, in case you had questions later? Uh, yes, yes, uh, sure. She grabs one of her business cards with the number to her office. If at any time you have any questions, feel free to call me. Right then, let's get the movie started. We, I should have probably asked if there's any patients I should worry about. Oh, damn. Me and my stupid hornball brain. She turns off the light in the lobby and turns on a movie for the patients. The office was dark and the film played on the screen. Patients sat and watched as the staff typed away at their keyboards. The sounds of the taps louder to you than the movie. Chatter could be heard amongst the patients as they commentated lightheartedly. They seemed nice, and you felt like you could sit back and enjoy the movie yourself, but the nurse tapped your shoulder and waved you into the room just behind. You and the nurse talked about clinical SOP and daily duties. The room was darker than out in the lobby. She pointed to a dim-lit red room behind you. This is our isolation room, she whispered. Patients can choose to sit in here if they need some space from everyone else. But in other instances, we must put uncooperative and rising hostile patients with restraints. If anyone gets violent with you and I'm not around, call one of our other staff for assistance and they'll get other staff to get involved if need be. The room stared back at you with a menacing aura. The deep red illuminated the entire room. It was empty and he hoped it stayed that way. I do not want to send anyone in here. Leaving the hospital through the lobby. You don't know what to think of the next week. Or months. Years, maybe? Only if you like working in this field. Oh, yeah. I need to go to the store. You pull out your phone to look up the nearest grocery store. You notice it's 5.15, so you still have plenty of the day to unbox all your shit before a quick trip for food. Ah, the nearest neighborhood Marwald seems good enough. It's only a few miles from here and home. Should be a quick stop. Better get going now. Yep, it's a grocery store. I mean, y you did say you want to go to Walmart, so hey. Your stomach growls as you pass through the aisles, reminding you of your sad breakfast and lack of lunch. Maybe coming to the store on an empty stomach wasn't the best of ideas. You seem to have many of those. Pulling out a crumpled paper from your pocket, you look to see what you need. Ah, yes. Milk, eggs, lunch meat, apples, bread, canned food. How do I write a list? Things. <laughs> when did I write all this down? Hastily, you grab a card and get looking. Whilst looking through the deli, you have a hard time choosing between two options. Your thinking is interrupted by a nudge. No, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to bump into you. You turn around. Something about this guy. Aren't you from the hospital? Those eyes. Something about them tipped you off. It was that creepy neighbor from next door. Oh, hey, you're you're my neighbor, right? Oh, sorry for the sudden introduction yesterday. I know it was pretty late. I didn't mean to spook you. It, if I did. Uh, think about it. I, I never got your name. It's... I'm... Liu. I'm Liu. He looks directly at you. I need this. His hands passes by your head, and his face gets closer to yours. You can see his olivey pale skin and tired eyes a lot closer now, that they weren't shrouded in darkness. He grabs something from the cold shelves. He then pauses and looks at the ground near you. Uh, thanks. Sorry. Without a goodbye, he turns around and walks off. Maybe you came on too strong. 
You seem pretty shy, but now you have a name. Liu. What a nice name. Stamping out of it, you get what you need, and taking some creative liberties with your shopping list, you walk to the register with a full basket. Making your way up to the front, you find two registers open. You see Liu almost finished at the checkout in the first register. The second register had a customer starting. Which one do you go to? Uh, I'll join Liu. I mean, really, like, he's almost done, so that makes sense to me. You enter the line just behind Liu. As the last of his stuff gets checked out, he pulls out his debit card. He stands in silence, waiting. Should I talk to him? I guess so. He started trying to start a conversation. Hey, uh, Liu, right? Uh, I wanted to apologize. Like, actually apologize about earlier and yesterday. I didn't want to make you feel uncomfortable, and if I did, I'd like to make it up to you. S say you can come over for a drink, and we can get to know each other better. He gives us a lighter expression. Uh, sure. With his bag of groceries, he walks out. He turns back to look at you. Guess I'll see you tonight, Lionel. Seeing him flustered was kind of cute. With rosy cheeks, you make your way to the front of the line. After checking out your groceries, you head home. As you get home, you place your groceries on the counter, putting away what you don't need to prepare the dinner for your guests tonight. Kind of think of it, you never gave him a time to arrive. Hastily, you prepare the dinner in case he shows up early. A simple pasta dinner with wine should be lovely. It takes almost no time at all to cook pasta and cook the sauce. Of course, you can't just have pasta. You decide to make a side of garlic bread, because garlic bread is... Mm, it's beautiful. You can't convince me otherwise. Ah, shit, I don't have garlic. You put some bread in the toaster and smear some butter on it. Good enough. Jesus, that was loud. I thought that wasn't the actual door, and there's no door here! Jeez! You rush over to the door. Hey, Liu! Oh, you look dapper. This poor man looks like he's about to pass out and die. I've never seen a man more red in my entire life. He stands there, almost motionless, his hair slicked back as best as it could with water. Do you want to come in? He nods his head. Why are you so cute? Thanks for having me over. He was still so red. No problem, I, I'm glad you decided to come over. He could barely look at me. He must be so nervous. Come, sit down. I just finished cooking. He sits down, waiting for dinner. You serve him the dinner yet prepared, staring at it and then back to you. He gets a forkful and starts eating. Over time, he starts drinking the wine. He loosens up and talks more. The day slowly turns to night. The meal has just been finished and you continue to talk. Feeling warm from the alcohol, you both take off your top layers, both now in your undershirts and hot at the face. The conversation gets more and more in-depth. Anything else you'd like to talk about? Well, I guess I'll ask about his hobbies. Do you have any hobbies? Um, he looks down flustered. I'm okay at guitar. Just okay? I, I don't know. Can I hear you play? Mmm, maybe sometime. What about you? Uh, you have any hobbies? What are my hobbies? Well, uh, I, I love gaming. You, huh? That's pretty cool. Want to show me sometime? Sure, sounds like fun. The wine had run out and you could hardly stand on your two feet. You guys look just as hammered as you. You also look to be glowing from the light. You get closer to him. He stares back at you with tired eyes. Uh, it's a bit forward, but I, I, I guess we'll get closer. You get closer, lips just inches apart. His skin was practically glistening from the warm light. He moves in on you. The feeling was warm, numb, and sensual. You kissed this absolute stranger on the lips, and he was gentle with you. After a while, you both pull away. Th th thanks for tonight. That, that was really nice. I, I guess I should head home then. Yeah, it, it's pretty late. Thank you for coming by tonight. I had lots of fun. You walk him over to the door and let him go. I... Uh, I just kissed the stranger. Ah, uh, you head off into your room and get into bed. You look up at the ceiling and start to drift off. It was a good day, like you said. <laughs> Mother! Dude, did you have to do that? For a to-be-continued sign! Ugh! 
Anyway, that was Glass Mine. I absolutely loved it. I do not get what's up with the jump scares, but they do get me good. <laughs> and hey, it was it was good. It was a pretty good story. And hell, I I have a lot of things to say about this game. For starters, like I I actually do care about like my patience and all. And it's like seeing Liu and all. He he doesn't really come off as the Yandere type as I was led to believe this game. Um, it's supposed to be. I'm, I'm not sure what to expect of all of this, but this was great. I actually really like this game. And hey, if you guys want to play it for yourself, link to the game is in the description below. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed yourselves. And hey, I'll see you guys in the next one. This is Lionel, signing out. Ciao.